Welcome to our service this morning for the 17th Sunday after Trinity, which comes to you from the Czech Valley Churches in South Norfolk. Welcome wherever you may be. We come together to worship and praise God, to ask for forgiveness of our sins and to hear the good news of Jesus. Lord, Lord direct, direct our, our thoughts, teach, teach us to, to pray. pray. Lift, Lift up, up your hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And our first hymn this morning is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. So we begin with a prayer of adoration. Creator of all, sustainer of all, saviour of all, your glory and majesty are beyond our understanding. Your power is too awesome to behold. And yet your love enfolds us as a gentle breeze. Saviour of all, sustainer of all, creator of all, we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. And now a psalm, Psalm 111. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great, Great are, are the works of the Lord, Lord studied by all who delight in them. them. Full of honour and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The, the works, works of his hand are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. 
They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Every day we do things that we know are not pleasing to God. And so let us now acknowledge and confess our sins. Loving, Loving God, God, we have, we have sinned, sinned against you in, in what thought we, we have thought, said and done. We, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are, we are truly sorry and turn away from, from what is wrong. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. And as we are forgiven people, we acknowledge God offers us the strength and power to live for him through his Holy Spirit. So let us hold on firmly to the hope we have, because we can trust God to keep his promise. And now we listen to our reading. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went and asked the Lord Aram, who sent a letter to the king of Israel. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send me someone to me who cure me of leprosy? How can he try to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of this leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, Father, if the prophet had told you to do this some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored, became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Who Can Know the Mind of Our Creator?
a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I know there is no God anywhere in the world except in Israel. So said Naaman in the second book of Kings. Today we've had two different stories about healing. One was from the Old Testament and the other from the Gospel of Luke. Two stories, but the same disease, the dread disease of the biblical times, leprosy. It was probably not the same as the disease that we call leprosy today, but it had the same ultimate outcome. Complete separation from ordinary life, unless treatment could be found. And in the ancient world, there was no cure. In our times, there are treatments for leprosy, even a complete cure, it, but it has to be caught very early on. In the ancient world, it was a sentence to the isolation that we all experience during lockdown. Separation from family, friends, ordinary parts of life. And then an unpleasant, long, lingering decline. So for the commander of the army of the King of Aram to be afflicted with leprosy must have been a huge blow because he had a lot to lose. He had led the army to great victories but now he had, in effect, a death sentence. So he was ready to take any help he could get, even if it did come from a lowly servant, an unimportant girl, who had been brought back from one of the raids that he had led into Israel. He must have been desperate to do it, because she was a person of no account at all. But he was desperate because he went to the king and armed with the king's letter and with various sumptuous gifts, he went back to Israel again, not to raid it this time. This time it was to ask for a cure for his leprosy. Now by any stretch of the imagination, that is an extraordinary thing to do because he had been raiding the villages there and now he wants the king of Israel to help to cure him, ready for another battle, we assume. The king of Israel certainly thought he was ready for another battle. He got into a bit of a patty and he tore his clothes. So now Elisha the prophet stepped in because he knew that God is in all of this somewhere. Why else would this proud man have been brought so low? Naaman has a bit of flan a flounce in his turn. The men of power in this story don't come out as particularly impressive. But Naaman is persuaded to try the treatment that Elisha suggests, and lo and behold, a cure. Sometimes the mighty have to be brought right down to earth in a dramatic way, if they're going to have a life worth living. We might think of one or two people of power in the world today who should also be learning this lesson. Naaman clearly knows to whom he owes his cure, because he went back to Elisha and he acknowledged his debt of gratitude. This morning we didn't hear the next part of the story, but Naaman does tell Elisha that he will not sacrifice to any god but the Lord. He knows that in his cure, in leaping into the river as he did, he has met the true and living God. In the second account, we heard of ten lepers being cured. This time, they're quite ordinary people, of no importance, and one of them was a Samaritan, and therefore of even less importance. 
in Jewish society at that time, definitely the sort of person to be looked down on. They were outside one village, and as Jesus was walking, he saw the ten men at a distance, and he heard them pleading for help. Now this is one of those healing miracles that's over so quickly that it's only by the result that we know that it's happened. There wasn't any sort of laying hands, there was no sort of ceremony at all. Jesus simply instructed them to go and show the priests, and on their way to do it, they realised that they are cured, that their skin is clean again. And nine of the men carry on to seek the priest's authentication, because that's what you have to do, the traditional way to acknowledge that a cure has taken place. They're obviously very pleased to find that they're cured, but their minds haven't grasped the enormity of what has happened, that they have been the subject of a miracle. It's only the Samaritan man who sees further, and realising his good fortune, he goes back to thank Jesus and to offer shouts of praise, we're told, shouts of praise to God. So two foreigners, hundreds of years apart, have been cured of a dreaded disease, and they know to whom they need to give their thanks. Others who have been given the same cure remain oblivious to the source of their healing, or if not oblivious, not terribly grateful. They're locked into the mindset of doing the traditional thing. It's the outsiders who are seeing further. I wonder how often we fail to see God at work in the world and in our lives. How often do we look back and thank God for our own great good fortune? It's always a salutary experience to see the gratitude of those who have very little and to contrast it with the complacency of those who have much, ourselves included. In many traditional stories we, that we tell children, it's the one who shows sympathy and gratitude who has the reward in the end. It's usually the younger son, isn't it? The younger son who has none of the attributes of the older ones, often dismissed as a fool. And yet, it's the older ones who treat the beggar as somebody of no consequence and go on their way, often telling the beggar to just clear out of the way anyway. And it's the younger one who shows kindness to the beggar, who shows kindness to strangers, that actually thereby secures good fortune for himself. It's that sort of story that we use to instill gratitude in our children. But I think sometimes we fail to show it in our own day-to-day -day lives. And quite apart from anything else, Remembering to say thank you helps us to see the positive things that are going on in our lives and in our world. And I think at a time when our world is seeing so many negative things, then actively seeking out the positive is one way of doing God's work. When we stop and acknowledge the gifts that God has bestowed on us, rather than just rushing on to the next thing, then we're much more aware of the positive. Sometimes the example is given of eating an orange and being so involved with peeling off and getting the next segment ready that the flavour and the texture of the segment that we're eating is not even noticed. Sometimes we just need to slow down, notice what is happening and then turn back and praise God as the Samaritan leper did. Praise God for the many blessings that he showers on us each day. Blessings that we're sometimes in danger of being quite aware of, unaware of, as we hurtle through our daily lives to, on to the next thing. Was no one found returning to give praise to God except this foreigner? Jesus asked. Remembering he was the one who was told Go on your way, your faith has cured you. I wonder what effect that has on us. And I wonder, wonder what happened in the lives of the other nine. We'll
In accepting healing, the people in our Bible readings needed faith. We now declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our next hymn is Purify My Heart. Teach us humility and gratitude that we may truly know you. 
help us to proclaim the gospel in our lives and with those we meet. We pray for your church and its leaders and for Christians around the world, especially those who face persecution for their faith. Forgive us for the times when our faith is weak and we are complacent and uncaring, when we forget to give thanks to you. Stir our consciences and help us to be true and faithful followers of Jesus, listening to your word and acting on your impulses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own government and for all world leaders at this time of increased tension. We pray for the countries where there is hunger and unrest. We ask that aid may reach those who need it and that peace may be upheld so that the innocent will not suffer. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan and the other places of the world where there is conflict. And we ask you to guide those who have power over war and peace throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who work to heal the sick and to care for the old and vulnerable in our hospitals and in our care homes. We give thanks for the miracle of medical science that has brought cures to many diseases giving hope to those who suffer. We pray for the work of the Leprosy Mission, leading the fight against leprosy and empowering people throughout the world to attain healing, dignity and life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the places where there is hunger for the countries where famine threatens and where thousands of people are affected. Ethiopia, Madagascar, South Sudan and Yemen. Bless the work of the aid agencies and prompt us to take action and to give money when we should. In this country we pray for all who are fearful for the coming winter and the rise in the cost of living. We pray for all who will have to use the food banks and our new community larder in order to feed their families. And we ask your blessing on all the charities that work to make sure that others do not go hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dying at this time and for the people who watch with them. We remember with gratitude our own beloved dead and all that their lives meant to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus who died and rose to life again for our sake. Accept these prayers with our praise and gratitude. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and so we too pray. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our next hymn now is All My Hope on God is Founded.
And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.